You can never have enough cone flowers. Welcome everybody to Gardening with the Landscape Connection. My name is Michelle. I live in Northern Illinois Zone 5. Today we're going to talk about perennials again. I know I talk about perennials a lot, but perennials are those things in your garden that give you that beauty throughout the whole season. And so today we're going to talk about the heat loving perennials that you want to add to your garden so that you've got those summer bloomers all summer long. So I'm gonna talk about 12 different ones. These are gonna be heat tolerant, drought tolerant, and here in zone five, I have grown every one of them and they've been absolutely fabulous for me. Hopefully you'll find something that you wanna grow at your house that will fit the conditions of what you've got going on. Because right now, as we get ready to go into those dog days of summer, you're either hot and humid, hot and hot, hot and dry, you're hot because July and August are hot. And so we need things that are really gonna hang out in our gardens and be able to handle that. So you probably have gotten through all of your annual planting. It's either on the ground or in your pots. They're probably starting to bulk up right now and looking really great. You've also probably finished all of your bloomers that you had for spring and early summer and they're probably done. So now's the time to get out there and do some maintenance if you haven't already and cut back some of those perennials that are done. And so I was gonna show you that first before we got into my list of 12. And what I brought with me here was a salvia. Now, this is in a pot, and as you can see, it does still have a little bit of bloom on here. But what you really wanna do is when your flowers are done, from your spring and early summer bloomers, you do wanna get out there and groom them up. Now, you can cut this all the way to the ground if you want, or you can cut it down uh, just to the base foliage. And what that means is I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to cut off all of these spent flowers. And you can do this with a little pair of clippers. You can get your big garden shears out and do that. But what you're gonna do is you are gonna stop the plant from sending energy to the flowers that are done because a salvia will rebloom for you if you do this. Now, if you cut it back all the way to the ground, it's gonna take it a little bit longer to recover and produce those blooms. So you wanna make sure that you have a long enough growing season to be able to do that. Here in zone five, it's borderline based on when I cut it back, sometimes I'll you know, get the flush of growth and sometimes I won't if I do it all the way to the ground. So I have a tendency to just cut mine back to the base foliage right here. And then what'll happen is this is gonna soak up the sun, it's gonna create some new foliage, and then it's gonna push up new growth and new flowers. Now, the second flush that you get of flowers is never gonna be as prolific as the first one, but it's certainly still gonna give you that beautiful show. And it's probably gonna be blooming more towards the end of August, beginning of September, depending on when you cut it back. But you do wanna go in and clean up your flowers. Whether they're gonna rebloom or not, sometimes just cutting them back sends that energy into the plant itself. It'll create new foliage on there and then look great the rest of the season. So if you haven't done that, now is a good time to get out there and give your little haircuts to all your little perennials. It's also another time to fertilize if you wanna give a second round of fertilizer fertilizer to your garden now's a good time to do that as well so there is a uh, just a little that's how you cut it back and when they talk about that that's that's what they mean so I just thought I'd show you that now today I did go ahead and I made up little cards look I made little cards because uh, sometimes I don't say the names right and I'm gonna do my very best to say the Latin names right but I thought, you know, I would make myself little flashcards, not for me, but for you, so that you would know uh, the common name will be the first and then the Latin name will be the second. And I'll attempt to entertain you by mispronouncing almost probably all of them, but I'll do my best to say the Latin name. Um, I don't know what it is. Latin in my brain and to my mouth sometimes doesn't always come out right. So let's get into our top 12 perennials that love the heat. And we're going to start with number one, which is a daylily or a hemirocalius. I think that's how you say it, but I could be wrong. So there you go. Daylily is number one. Plus, I'm notorious for losing count. So here we go. Number one is a daylily. I love daylilies. If you are a beginner gardener, these are one of the easiest ones to grow. They're heat tolerant, drought tolerant. They have beautiful flowers on them. You can find one pretty much anywhere from zone three all the way to zone nine, maybe even zone two. So with a daylily, the flower on it's going to bloom for just one day. And you're going to get this big, beautiful flower on here. But it's also going to be loaded with a gazillion other buds. And typically one plant will put off five or six different shoots of flowers. So they probably have a two-week window that they're blooming. And some of them are repeat bloomers. 
and they're a little shorter to the ground, but there's all kinds of colors and shapes and sizes. There's doubles, there's singles, there's red, yellow, purple, orange, white, cream. I mean, there's a lot of different colors of daylilies. So you find the one that you like. And so this is a taller daylily. This is the Bella Lugosi. And I really like this one. This one kind of has that plummy purple color with the yellow throat. This one's gonna grow in zone four through nine. It's gonna get about two feet high and about two feet wide. These are all gonna be full sun plants that want eight or more hours of sun. There's a few that you might get away with part shade, but even in part shade, it probably needs at least six hours of sun on any of these, at least where I live. Most of these that I'm gonna talk about, in fact, all of these are gonna be drought tolerant. And what that means is that they can go for a longer period of time without being watered, but it doesn't happen the first year. It can take one to two years for your plants to become established so that they are drought tolerant. So don't just think you can put it in the ground and not water it because guess what, it'll die. So you do have to water them and get them uh, going those first couple years. So daylily is number one. That is on my list. And my favorite is the Bella Lugosi. There are a gazillion, gazillion daylilies out there. I couldn't even begin to tell you how many there are. So if you're looking for an easy plant to grow, that's one. Now, if you also ever get to where your foliage is looking kind of ratty on those and it's turning yellow, you can actually cut those all the way to the ground and they'll reflush with new growth and look good for the rest of the year. Now, if you have a rebloomer, you might just want to trim around the outside edges and pull that off. But if you have one that only blooms the one period of time, you can even mow them over with your lawnmower and be good. Okay, let's move on to number two, which is yarrow or akilla. So akilla, I'll kill ya. <laughs> but it is yarrow. So I love yarrow. Yarrow will grow in heavy clay. I've got some growing at my house. It's doing fabulous. I have learned as I've moved into my new house, or it's not new anymore. I've been there for six years. I have found, though, I'm finding more and more things that do great in the heavy clay. So this is yarrow here. This is one of my favorites. This is the summer pastels. Now, usually when you do yarrow, I like to do a big drift of yarrow but it's got this beautiful ferny foliage on it, which is absolutely great. And the summer pastels is gonna be a mix of white, dark pink, light pink. Sometimes there'll be yellows blended in, but it's those pastels. I think these are so cottage looking. And so these are one that we are gonna be putting in the cottage garden. This one here is deer resistant, so the deer won't come and eat it. Zones three through eight. So they've got a good coldness hardy, uh, hardiness. And they're going to grow, this one, this particular one, is going to grow 24 to 30 inches. And you want to space them 24 to 30 inches. Now, you do want to read your tag about yarrow because some yarrows, like the moonbeam, uh, the red velvet, some of the older cultivars can be invasive if you're not careful. And they'll spread like crazy. So you want to make sure that you read your tag. Some of the newer ones uh, aren't as invasive, so you want to be careful. I have found that this one doesn't spread as aggressively as I planted uh, the red velvet one time and I didn't really like it because it really spread where I didn't want it to. So be careful with that and just know that about this. But they're super drought tolerant, easy to grow and absolutely gorgeous in the landscape. And they've got a really long bloom time. And if you're looking for flowers that you can cut and dry, yarrow is a good one for that as well. So number two, yarrow. Okay, number three, and I've talked about this one before, is our hyssop, our anise hyssop or our agastache. So I love the hyssop and the agastache. I'm going to talk about the blue fortune. There are other cultivars out there, but my favorite because it's reliable. It, it is just gorgeous. It's a serious pollinator attractor is the hyssop, the blue fortune. I love this one. This one has, again, a super long bloom time. And if you plant them in the back or the maybe the mid back of the border, they absolutely have these beautiful lavender stalky flowers on them. Now, what I love about hyssop Let's see, let's move it down here a little bit so you can actually still see the flowers. What I love about it is how many pollinators it attracts to the garden. And it is this nice subtle color, but it is gorgeous when planted in mass. Now, hyssop or agastache can be planted in zone five through nine. This particular cultivar is gonna get two to three feet tall and it's gonna get about two feet wide. So this one plant will get some pretty good bulk to it. It is got, um, Great things that are attract hummingbirds, butterflies, your bees will be all over this. They just love this plant. It is going to need eight or more hours of sun a day. I tried growing this in part shade uh, where it was getting like six hours at my other house. And 
you know, it grew, it got flowers on it, but it didn't get as many flowers as the patch that I had growing in eight plus hours of sun. And I found that it leaned towards the sun uh, when it was in that shade. So I recommend full sun, even though the tag does say uh, part sun too. The other thing is these have really super long blooming and the foliage is actually, you can eat it. You can seep it for teas, you can put it in salad. So anise hyssop is considered uh, an herb as well. So really, really nice one to put in the garden. All right, let's move on to number three, which is our coneflower or our echinacea. So I have quite a few varieties. I'm gonna switch them out and get them on my cart here so that I can kind of show you the tags of all the different ones because it's like a rainbow. They are so many echinaceas and coneflowers to love out there. Short ones, tall ones, red, yellow, orange, white, different shades of pink. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. So give me a second, I'm gonna flip the cart out and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. I've got a whole cart full of coneflowers here. You can make a rainbow in your garden or you can create a drift of all one kind for serious impact. There are so many different kinds of coneflowers. Now, one of the things you wanna know about coneflowers are that if you leave them up and leave this flower up, this is your seed head right here. Now, the birds, once this starts to dry, will love these seeds in here and you can leave it up through the winter. But know that it can also drop those seeds. The birds can grab the seeds and drop them on their way someplace else. And then you can have these spread to different places of your garden. So if you don't want that, when the flowers are spent, you wanna come in, follow the stem down to the next set of leaves or all the way to the bottom and you wanna cut that out so that you don't have these spreading around in the garden. Now, I personally want them to spread around my garden because some echinaceas, some of those really specialty ones, they can be kind of expensive. So I'm trying to get them to spread in my garden naturally. That way I don't have to spend so much money on them. Uh, and then they're also easy to split. So if I have someone that I want to love on and give one to, I can dig some up and give them that as well. So let's start with some of my favorites and let's start with the purples. So this one here is a Magnus. So a Magnus is just, you know, it's got that beautiful flower head on it where the petals kind of radiate out versus down. And some of the flowers, uh, the petals will radiate down, some will radiate out. Some of the petals are big, some of them are tricolored, some of them are doubles. So the, oh, there's, the, the variety is endless. But Magnus is kind of tried and true. It's been around for a long time. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're gonna grow 24 to 36 inches high. So this is a three footer. So it's actually a bigger echinacea. They're, the clump itself is probably gonna get two feet around and one clump can put out 12 to 15 different flowers. I mean, this is just a baby in its one gallon pot and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight flowers on it and it's not even full grown. Uh, these are also deer resistant. So that's a beautiful thing as well. Uh, they are a reliable solution for hot, windy locations where nothing else can grow. So echinacea. So this is your Magnus right here. I love this one. It's just your tried and true purple, but it is a taller one. So I love that one. Another purple that I really like that's got kind of a deeper, darker color to it is the wild berry. So look at how much darker that purple is on this one. This is a shorter one getting only 18 to 24 inches high. These are gonna grow in sun to part shade. Now, the part shade part, again, it's six hours and I find sometimes if it doesn't get enough sun, they will lean and they don't flower as heavily in part shade as they do in full sun, so know that. Uh, these are great for pollinators. Your birds, again, love the seeds on them. They typically are blooming from July to September and most of them are growing in zone. Let's take a look here. Uh, oh my goodness, that's dirty. Three through eight is most of them, but make sure you check the tag and make sure it can grow in your zone. But this one here, isn't that gorgeous? That one is the wild berry. And then another pink one that we have, let me grab this here. Let's see. This one, I just have a tag because it only has its flowers just now starting to open on it. So I love this one because see how it's got that green center in there? Isn't that gorgeous? And then it's got the flowers just starting. So this is called a kismet raspberry. And so this one here, absolutely gorgeous. It's got that deep, dark, rich um, petal on there. And then that center that starts green ages to more of a pink color. They're 16 to 18 inches high. They're gonna get about two feet wide, zone four through 10. So I absolutely love this one too. This 
it's like a very deep raspberry colored. I also like the white ones. Okay, so this is the white swan. And as you can see, the white swan, it has the petals that are more radiating down than it has the petals radiating up. I had to move my camera a little bit forward. The sun is rising over here. And so it was like casting shadows everywhere. Anyways, back to the white one. So this one is the white swan. This one is 18 to 20 inches high, zone three through nine, about two feet wide, absolutely gorgeous. And this has got the petals radiating down. So this one is white swan, like that one too. I also like the multicolored ones where you get different colors on the stems. So one of my favorites is the Playful Meadow Mama. That's what this one is here. And this one has been in the pot and he's, you know, he's wanting out of the pot. This one out of all of them probably looks the freshest. And you can see how you've got this beautiful dark center right here with the deep purple. And then it kind of pulls out into like this melon orange color. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's see what colors it says it is on here. Again, this one's going to grow 20 to 26 inches, 18 to 24 inches. There's the flower. Isn't that gorgeous? Raspberry blooms with pointed white tips. Now, this one doesn't have a lot of white on it, but it could be because it's in the pot. I have grown these in the ground, and it does get like the dark purple to the orange to the white tips. So it's got like three colors going on on the petal. So absolutely gorgeous. Again, this one's Playful Meadow Mama. How cool is that? Zone three through eight. All right, and then the last one, well, actually, there's a couple more. I know, there's so many. I love coneflowers. There's so many of them. Another one that I really like is the Sombrero series. And I pulled four different ones because there's orange, there's red, there's yellow, and then there's like this deep raspberry color. And I love all four of them. I am going to be planting every one of these that I'm showing you in the cottage garden that we're going to be doing in about two weeks. In fact, most of the things that I'm showing you are going to go in that cottage garden as my big, heavy summer bloomers. And I want this car cottage garden to be kind of, you know, low maintenance because I don't want to create another project for me to have to deal with. So I'm putting things in here that are going to be able to handle the heat of the summer and give me that beauty that I'm looking for in the garden. All right, so another one is the Sombrero series, and this one is a red one. Isn't that great? I just love that. There's the red on there. I just think that is so gorgeous. This one is going to get 22 to 24 inches high, about 24 to 26 inches wide. Now, some of the colored ones you'll see, they don't have as good of a coldness, uh, hardiness as some of the ones that have been around for a long time. So make sure you check your tag on that. Uh, this one here is saying zones four through nine. So it's got a pretty good hardiness. And so I like it. And this is out of the Sombrero series. This one is called Salsa Red. So I really like that one. And then they have this beautiful yellow one. And, oh, what is with these cars that don't have mufflers? Makes me crazy. I'm like, you're like, just get a muffler. Okay, <laughs> I'm done whining about the cars. All right, this one's called Lemon Yellow. How gorgeous is that? Now, most of these get about the same size, 24 to 26 inches high, zone four through nine, 18 to 22 inches. But look at that beautiful yellow. I think that's like the summer yellow. It's, it's just gorgeous. I just love that. So, so many coneflowers to choose from. Um, I have a, more, a few more on this cart, but there's uh, an orange one on here someplace, if I can find the tag. Yep, here it is. So here's the orange one here. Isn't that great? This one's called Adobe Orange. I think that one's great. Again, 22 to 24 inches high, 18 to 20 inches wide, zone four through nine. Love that one. And then the last one that I absolutely love, let me make sure I put the tag in, back in the right one, is this, let's see, where is it? Here it is. This one right here. Okay, so this one is called Butterfly Rainbow Marcella. It's also one of those ones that's going to have all kinds of different colors going throughout the plant. So this is a multicolored flower. They bloom for a long season. It's pretty compact, only getting about 18 inches high. So they're pretty small. Uh, it's got some nice branching on here. And again, see, look at this one. It's got more of an orange to it. This one is going to have more of a purple to it. And then as they grow, they're multicolored throughout. And then this cone, instead of being like a little button, it's more like a cone on here and absolutely gorgeous. So I love these. Um, very tough and durable. Cut off faded flowers to 
uh, prolonged flowering. So that's the other thing is if you go through and you deadhead as the flowers are done, one, they don't seed, but two, it's going to, it's going to encourage it to push more flowers versus putting its energy towards creating seeds. So you can extend the life or the bloom time, not the life, but the bloom span of your echinacea by doing that. And then maybe just keep the last ones on there for the birds. So that is our echinacea. That was number four. Let's move on to number five. I'm going to flip my card again. Be right back. Okay, I won't spend as much time on these next ones because there's not as many different kinds as there are the cone flowers. And I'm really only going to talk about pretty much for the most part, the ones that I've grown. There's a few like cultivars that I haven't grown that I'm actually gonna try out this year. Uh, but the next one that we're gonna talk about, number five, is your ornamental onion or an allium. So alliums are next, number five. So this one is by Proven Winners, and this is the one that I was talking about that I've grown the Millennium, and I've never grown the Serendipity. So the Serendipity is the one by Proven Winners, and this one is going to get these blue, lavender, purple, you know, globe-like flowers on them. They always look good. I think I love the alliums from the allium family. Again, they're deer resistant. The foliage looks good in the spring. It looks good in the summer. It looks good when the little billy balls come out on it. It looks good in the fall. It looks good in the winter. I love alliums. So this one here, these ones bloom probably more towards the beginning of August, whereas this one here is called Summer Beauty, and it's actually blooming right now in the landscape. And these are very prolific. So you're going to get a lot of flowers on them all at once. And I find that the further we go into the season, the darker the flowers get, not on each individual plant, but each individual cultivar. So these are like a beautiful lavender color. Let me see if I can gather those up. And they get these beautiful little billy balls. And these aren't even all the way open yet. They're just now starting to open. So I like the Millennium, and I've grown that one a lot. This one is Summer Beauty. I like that one, too. And then this one is the Serendipity by Proven Winners. This one is going to grow 15 to 20 inches high, get about 10 to 15 inches wide, super drought tolerant. Um, and if you crush the leaves, it does give you a little bit of an, an onion smell. Um, great, great attractor for pollinators. So more of that front of the border plant. Absolutely gorgeous. Now these summer uh, beauties, these ones are going to get a little taller, 22 to 24 inches high, and they're going to space 12 to 15 inches. And these are all growing in zone four through nine. So you could actually like plant a succession of alliums blooming in your garden by picking the different cultivars and kind of have them bloom one right after another and always have that going on. And they always look good. And they're one of the first things to pop up in the spring and they have great foliage. And I see my manager walking over. Let me see what he needs. Okay, got that all taken care of. All right, next is Russian sage or Peroskiva. I don't know if I said that right. Peroskia. I think that's how you say it. Anyways, Russian sage. And so Russian sage comes in different sizes. There's like small, medium, large. Uh, but they are super drought tolerant. They're great parking lot plants. Once they start blooming that beautiful lavender flower, they kind of keep blooming through the rest of the summer. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Little Spire. It's probably one of the bigger ones out there. And it's going to get these beautiful lavender flowers on it. It's kind of sparse and open, and it's great in the back of the border. And it's great if you can weave something else through it. That's nice as well. I've never had to stake these. They kind of stand up all on their own, and they've got this beautiful kind of green silver foliage on them. These are going to be great butterfly attractors. They're going to grow in full sun. This one here is going to get 36 to 60 inches high. So that's a five footer. So that's pretty much almost as tall. Well, I'm not five feet, but I'm close. I'm a little bit taller, so almost as tall as me. And one clump is gonna get three feet around. So if you're looking for a big one back of the border, the little spire is one that you probably maybe wanna take a look at. Now there's also one that's just called, let's see if I can see it, Perovskia. Perovskia, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm sure you guys will tell me if I'm not, but here you go. That's how you spell it right there. Okay, Russian sage. But this one here is kind of a smaller one. This one only gets three to four feet tall. Same cultivar, or not cultivar, same culture, same color flowers, silver gray foliage, still drought tolerant, absolutely great, just doesn't get as big. And then Proven Winners has one 
called denim and lace and this is probably the smallest one I've ever seen and it is very compact whereas the other two kind of grow out and they sprawl and they kind of spread out a little bit this one kind of grows up and it kind of stays in its nice little clump this one only is going to get um 28 to 32 inches high so that's still pretty small for a Russian sage uh, the clump is going to grow 32 to 36 inches around, so a pretty good sized clump. It's going to take it a little while to get that big. Certainly won't happen in the first two years, but usually by three, year three or four, your perennials have put on their full size, and you know that's how big they're going to get. So again, all of these are drought tolerant. They want to grow in full sun, Russian sage. That was number six. All right, on to number seven, which is our Nipophia. Nipophia. <laughs> God, I hate saying Latin, but it is the red hot poker. Number seven. Now these grow in zones five through, I think, let me grab it. I think it's five through nine, but let me check to make sure. Uh, yeah, five through nine. And look at that guy. Isn't he kind of cool? He's very interesting. Super drought tolerant. Most of them are bicolor, uh, bright orange, red, and yellow uh, are very eye-catching. They're different looking. So kind of a cool thing to put into the garden. They're going to grow two and a half to three feet tall and the, they're going to get like 16 to 20 inches wide. And once this gets going, this is looks like daylily foliage, but it's actually really thick and kind of rubbery and really stiff. Whereas a daylily, is, it kind of droops a little bit. These kind of stick straight out. Now, usually one clump is going to put off more than one flower. This is obviously in a pot and only in year one. Uh, but this one here is uh, got that nice grass green foliage, but it's nice and stiff and erect. It thrives in well-drained soil. Um, and if you want to divide these, you can. And very long lasting flowers on these, but heat and drought tolerant. So if you're looking for something really fun, nip. Nipophia, Nipophia or Red Hot Poker. There you go, number seven. All right, number eight is a Rebecca, so, or a Black Eyed Susan. And so my favorite is the Viet's Little Susie. That's my absolute favorite one. But what I brought today was the American Gold Rush. The American Gold Rush is the 2023 Perennial of the Year by the Perennial Plant Association, the PPA. And so this is the one that I'm trying to grow this year. I'm gonna put some in the ground. I've never grown this one. I've grown tons of Gold Sturm, tons of the uh, Viet's Little Susies but I'm gonna put this one in the ground this year. Um, I'm gonna love it. It's only gonna be 22 to 24 inches high, but a clump of black eyed Susans, if they're really happy, they can get like three to three and a half feet just in the clump if they're really super happy. These grow in heavy clay, so I love them for that as well. And they're actually, I've seen them get bigger in the clay than the tag says. The other thing is this is another one that the seeds will spread all over the place if you don't deadhead the flowers. The birds do like the seeds and it's a great attractor for pollinators, but just know that these can spread in your garden from the seeds if you don't deadhead them out. But if you want to leave them up in the winter, go for it. These are going to grow in zone. Why doesn't it say on here what zone this is? I don't know, but I want to say most Black Eyed Susans are zone, I think, three through nine. I could be wrong on that. Make sure you check your tag if you're going to plant the Black Eyed Susan but I just love this. Now, one of the things that this one is really resistant to is any kind of fungus. So I can't wait to put this one in my garden. This will be in our cottage garden as well. All right, so, oh, I didn't hold up my little tag. Let's make sure I'm, see, number seven. <laughs> number eight, Rebecca Black-Eyed Susans. All right, on to number nine. Number nine, hold on. All right, had an employee coming in, so I wanted to, they don't like to be on camera. Some of them do, some of them don't, but I wanted to just pause it for that. Okay, so let's go on to number nine. Number nine is Heliopsis, or our false sunflower. I've talked about this one before. I love Heliopsis. This one here is from Proven Winners. It's called Tuscan Sun. I have this one growing in my garden. I absolutely love this. It is a taller perennial for the back of the border. It's got these beautiful yellow flowers on it. Super long bloom time. 24 to 32 inches high, 24 inches wide. This one's going to grow in zone four through nine. Now you can deadhead this to keep it blooming longer again and to tidy the plant up to keep it looking good. 
I really don't do anything to mine. I just let them bloom. I don't have time to do deadheading. So I try to plant things that don't need that. Or if I don't do it, it's not going to look terrible or horrible outside. So this one is the Tuscan Gold. Now a new one that I just got. I've been waiting for this one all summer to get here. I just went and picked this one up yesterday. This one here is called Sunstruck. And look at the foliage on there. Look at that white and green with the yellow flower. I can't wait to plant these. This is also a Heliopsis. This one is only going to get 14 to 16 inches high. So this is a shorter front of the border or maybe back second row of the border. I can't wait to plant this up against something contrasting. This will also be in our cottage garden. And I just love, love, love this one. And it is zone four through nine. So that is number nine, Heliopsis false sunflower. Number 10 is catmint or nepeta. Now this is also a spring bloomer, but it definitely holds its own in the heat of the summer. If you have not already cut this one back, I recommend that you do cut the outer foliage back and you probably have new growth down in the center. Then this will reflush, rebloom, and look great the rest of the season. Now this one here is one of my favorites. This one is the Cat's Pajamas by Proven Winners. But I like the Kit Kat, the Walker's Low. I like the Cat's Meow, which is the bigger version of this one from Proven Winners. These are so reliable, hardy pollinator attractor, super drought tolerant. The one downside is it doesn't grow great in heavy clay. I tried it, it just didn't do well, but it will grow great in well-draining soil. These are gonna get, this one is only 12 to 14 inches high, so very compact, a lot of flowers on it. The cat's pajamas gets bigger, no, cat's meow, gets bigger, more like, I wanna say 24 to 28 inches. This is gonna grow in zone three through eight, and your clump is gonna get 18 to 20 inches high. So Nepeta is number 10. Just love, love, love this one. All right, let me switch out my cart one more time. All right, number 11, it's the, let's say, Leucanthemum. I think I said that one right, actually. Or a daisy. Okay, so here we are, number 11. I love daisies. Now, sometimes they can be a shorter-lived perennial, and what I mean by that is they might not last past six or seven years, at least for me, and I'm finding that I have to replace them, but I'm okay with that because I love daisies. They are just that happy flower in your garden that you just got to love. So, I have some different ones here. Some of them, uh, three of them, are from Proven Winners, and this one is the Daisy May. And as you can see, it's kind of just that classic white daisy flower. These are getting ready to kind of be done in the pots because they, you know, they just don't always last as long in the pots as they do in the ground. And I know the ones at my house are just like, they're just going at it. So this one is the Daisy, this one is Daisy May. It's kind of that classic daisy. This one is going to get 24 inches high. The clump might get 14 inches wide. It is growing in zone five through nine. So this one is the Daisy May. Another one that I really like are the Marshmallow. And so this is a double, absolutely fluffy looking, absolutely great. I love this one, 18 to 20 inches high. The clump's gonna get about 20 inches wide. It's always helpful if I put the tag where you can actually read it. And again, this one is zone five through nine. So this one has got these like three and a half, three to three and a half inch flowers on it. So in this can, these are smaller, but these actually get really big. So marshmallow. And then the other one I do really like, this one, it kind of has a yellow hue to it. It's called banana cream. Now this one in the pot looks more yellow than it does if you plant it in the ground. I have found that it kind of has like a yellow white thing going on in the ground, but this one is banana cream too. 20 to 24 inches high, the clump is 20 inches wide, zone five through nine, and it's got a lemon yellow flower bud that opens to a creamy white. Now, these all that I have here, when you put them up next to the white daisy, they look yellow. So um, I have found that they pale out, but I don't think that they're white. I think that they're yellow, especially when you put them up next to the other daisies. So I do like those. Now, the ones that I have growing at my house are snow caps. They're the shorter daisy. They're like your classic daisy. If you want a taller one, try the cultivar Becky. That's another good one that's taller. The snowcap daisy is going to grow in zone four through nine, 14 to 18 inches high, and the clump gets about 18 inches, but it's that classic white daisy with the yellow buttons in the center. Love, love, love daisies. So 
there you go. Now daisies, when they're done, they will look better if you deadhead them back. They're not the greatest looking flower when they're done flowering. They kind of look messy. So those will be one if you plant them that you will have to cut back either to the base foliage or cut it all the way to the ground. Okay, so number 12, our very last one is rose mallow or hibiscus. So this is not a annual biscuits. We are talking about a perennial biscuits. It is a perennial. It's not a shrub. Some people ask me if it's a shrub, but it's not because you're cutting this thing back to the ground every single year. And these are the ones, I cannot believe how many trucks are driving by right now. It's like insane. But these are the ones that you think that they died, but they didn't. They are the last things to get going in the spring and they really aren't gonna grow until the heat of the summer hits. So a lot of times you won't even see anything happening with these until after Memorial Day, unless we had like a really crazy warm warm up uh, before then. So these are gonna get, now this one is the one that I really, really like. This one, and there's a lot of them. This one is called Midnight Marvel and I like it because it's got kind of a mix on the foliage between the dark and the green and it's kind of mixed throughout there and then it gets this deep burgundy red flower on it so it's not like a bright red it's like this deep rich red and I really like this one the flowers on it are like 10 inches across they're absolutely gorgeous we have one of these growing out by the road and every time it blooms it just brings people in because they're like we want that out there and so I make sure I always have plenty of these to sell so it's like Every year we have a great big hibiscus and uh, hydrangea sale and it actually starts today. We spent all day yesterday getting it ready. We have like 13 different kinds of hibiscus up there, which if you stay tuned on uh, our next video, we're going to talk about some of the different hibiscus. They are super easy to grow. Now they are kind of a boggy plant, so they do want consistent watering. They, they probably are the one on my list that's not as drought tolerant as say some of the other ones and they might need some supplemental water but I have them growing at my house. I've only had to water them one extra time this year so far, and they're doing pretty good. So just know that about them. And we have them growing at the road and we haven't like added water to any of them, but when it does rain, which we've been very sparse on rain, the parking lot kind of sluice the water off over to where I have a couple of them planted. So they get these deep waterings whenever we rain because the parking lot sluice all the water that way. But I just love these and they're pretty reliable and pretty hardy. Most of them are growing in zones five through eight. So I'm so sorry, all of you people in two, three, and four, these aren't great ones for that, but if you can um, put them in a pot and maybe bring them inside, maybe you could overwinter them that way. I've never tried that because all of mine are in the ground, but oh my gosh, if you want that tropical vibe and those big, beautiful, glorious flowers, try a hibiscus absolutely gorgeous and there's a lot of different ones out there this one is going to grow five feet high and get about six feet wide so that's a lot of growing in just one little season if you think about it because our growing season for one of these actually is like june through maybe the end of september and then they're done so that's a pretty short growing season for this thing to put on that kind of growth so i do fertilize mine in the spring when i start to see the first growth and then i feed it again midsummer now I don't know that you have to do that. I just do because I feel like it just needs a little extra energy uh, to do all that growing and to put on all that flower growth. So hibiscus is number 12 on my list. And I don't think I can make this video any longer. I probably should have only done eight, but I couldn't help myself. I needed to talk about all 12. Okay, so there you go. There are my 12 heat loving perennials that maybe one of those you'd like to try. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative, inspiring, and you want to go out and plant something. I'm Michelle. Have a great day, and thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.